Hello and welcome to another Anger Mix. Today we'll be talking about conditionals. We'll discuss zero conditional, first conditional, second conditional, third conditional, and also mixed conditional. Remember something before we begin with our lesson today. We have a lot of conditional forms in English. It is not only like zero, one, two, three, and mixed. We have a lot of other forms. As long as you sound normal and natural, your conditional would be correct. But it needs what it needs experience and time and a lot of studying. Okay, so let's begin with our lesson today. First, we have zero conditional. Why we use a zero conditional? What is considered true? Okay, in every conditional, we have two clauses. The first clause, or it could be the second clause sometimes. One clause is the condition clause, and the other clause is the consequence clause. So when we discuss different conditionals, we are talking about the form of the condition clause and the form of the consequence clause. For example, for zero conditional, the form of the condition is in present and the consequence is also in present. Listen, we say politicians don't care if millions die. Remember something, this is actually for intermediate and lower levels, but we always need a comma to divide the condition from the consequence, unless you have uh, the condition word in the middle. It means if you bring the consequence, this is the consequence first and the condition next. You don't need a comma, but otherwise you will definitely need a comma to separate them. We'll have the examples later on. Another form of zero conditional is when, we, when you want to state something that was considered true. It means in the past. The form is the condition is in the past and the consequence is also in the past. Example, whenever the US invaded a country it failed miserably. Invaded, past simple. Failed miserably, past simple. Remember, this present, present, and past, and past are not necessarily simple forms. They could also be continuous forms. Again, as long as you sound natural and normal, your conditional is fine. Nobody is ever going to ask you, for example, is this a conditional, first conditional, second conditional, third conditional? These numbers don't matter as long as you are speaking correctly and you are sending the right message across. Okay, so we stay with us for the next slide. Now, after zero conditional, we'll discuss first conditional. What is first conditional? First conditional describes a real present situation. When we discuss second conditional, you will see the contrast between a real situation and an unreal situation, okay? So what is the form? The condition is in present and the consequence is in future. We have three examples in here. If you are healthy, this is your condition. And because you brought condition first, you need a comma here, definitely. You may survive COVID. Look, may is a future reference. I know, when, when we hear future, we think of will be going to and so on. But may, when you say, I may do that for you, I'm giving you a future reference. So it is also used in first conditional. Another example, they'll give in if you persist. You see, because we brought the consequence first and condition second, we don't need a comma in between. If you agree, we should begin. Again, you could use should, because it should also, in, in, in this sense in here, is a future reference. So you could use it in first conditionals. And again, you agree is in present simple. The second conditional. A second conditional describes a hypothetical present situation. Hypothetical means imaginary. It means unreal. What does that mean? This distinction is very important, okay? So listen very carefully. So you, so you won't have to explain if this is a real situation or an imaginary situation. When you use a second conditional, the person who is listening to you would know that 
you are talking about an unreal situation. So the message you are sending across is very important. So what is the form? What is the structure of a second conditional? We use past plus would or could or might with different meanings, of course. And we, when we say past, it could be past simple or past continuous. It's a mostly past simple, like in everyday language. Example, if people cared more, comma, you see, this is in past. Look, this is the most confusing conditional for English learners. Because we use a past form, but we mean present and future. That's why we call this cared in here, we call it fake past or subjunctive. About subjunctives, we'll discuss later on in, in, in a future lesson. If people cared more, when you, when you use this, it means you, it means you are saying that people don't care. It'd be, or it would be, this is the contracted form, it would be a better world. It means people don't care. That's why we call it a hypothetical or an imaginary or an unreal situation. Sometimes you use this structure to complain about something. Look, and also uh, to give advice to somebody. We say, if I were you, and remember, uh, this is because this is what we call subjunctive. Again, in a future lesson soon, we'll discuss what subjunctive is. But in conditionals, we don't generally use was. It is okay in a spoken English, but in written English and, and especially in formal English, it is not right to use was. You, you don't say if she was, we say if she were, if he were, if I were. It is not only formal, you could use it in spoken English too, but be careful uh, to always use it in written English and in formal English. If I were you, comma, I'd listen more carefully. This is the contracted form of I would listen carefully. If I were you, this is, an, uh, this is a hypothetical situation because it means I'm not you. It is, telling, it, is, it is saying that I'm not you. That's why we use second condition. Now, a third conditional. Again, the most challenging conditional is probably the second conditional. The third conditional is easy. It is a hypothetical past situation. Hypothetical past situation, this is very useful when you want to express regrets. Because, you know, we know that we cannot change the past unless you have a time machine or something like that. But anyway, what is the structure of a third conditional? The condition is in past perfect. The consequence is would or could or might, different meanings. When you say would, you're expressing certainty. When you say could, you're expressing probability and also might is very similar to could. And plus have, don't forget this, this is the difference between the third conditional and the, and the uh, second conditional in the, in the structure of the consequence. Example, if I, this is the contracted form for had, if I had applied for the job, comma, I would have or would have got it. This is, I underline this because I want to emphasize that the main verb after have is always in past participle. We have get, got, got. If I'd applied for the job, it means I didn't apply for the job. You're regretting. It's not necessarily a regret, but it is very common to express this meaning. Another example. I could have called somebody if I had had a phone. If I had had fun, you're talking, you're definitely talking about the past situation in which you didn't have a phone. Now you are saying that somebody asks you, why didn't you call me? You say, if I had had a phone, I would have called you or I could have called you. And again, called in past participle form because it follows have. It means I didn't have a phone. This is third conditional. Now, what is a mixed conditional? A mixed conditional could come in two different forms. A mixed conditional is generally um, the mix of second conditional and third conditional. Sometimes we use second conditional in the condition and third conditional in the consequence, and sometimes it's vice versa. 
The structure is, the first floor is past perfect. This is the condition we're using it is like um, third conditional because it is in past perfect. But the consequence is not would have anymore. It is would because the consequence is a present kind of situation. So it is hypothetical past plus a present result. It's very simple. Example, if I hadn't done it, this is definitely about the past. Something in the past. You did something in the past. Now you are saying that if I hadn't done it. Okay. He wouldn't, if he hadn't done it, sorry, if he hadn't done it, it means he did it. He wouldn't be in jail now. You see, this is the difference between a mixed conditional and a third or a second conditional. One part is from third conditional. The other part is from the uh, second conditional because it is talking about now, this the, the present situation. So another form of mixed conditional is this. It's a hypothetical present situation plus past events. It is like the, the other way around um, as opposed to our previous form of mixed conditional. So we use the structure is past in the condition plus would, could or might have in the consequence. So you see the condition is like the second conditional and the consequence is like the third conditional. Example, if she were a good doctor, when you say if she were a good doctor, it means she is not a good doctor. It's a present situation. Okay. If she were a good doctor, now, the consequences about the past, he would have survived. It means because she is not a good doctor, this doctor was in a situation in a past time when somebody died, some fellow died. So we are saying that if she were a good doctor right now, like generally, if she were a good doctor, he would have survived. Again, I underline this because this is in past participle form. She's not a good doctor and he died. All right. Now, our next slide is about the conjunction unless. Unless is also another conjunction we use in conditional. The, it's very simple. Unless means if not. It means if you are using unless instead of if, you need to make, you need to change the tone of either the condition or the consequence. It means if, the, if you have if in your conditional and the uh, condition is a positive clause and the consequence is a positive clause, you need to make one of them negative. If you want to use unless, which one do you make? Do you do you do you make negative? It's up to you. It like as long as your sentence sounds natural. Example: I won't go unless he invites me. Okay, and I won't go if he doesn't invite me. In here, you see, we removed unless and we used if, and we made invites. Uh, into doesn't invite. So we made it from positive to negative. Conditional should. We use should in conditionals a lot. It has multiple functions, but listen to this. Should generally, when you use it in conditionals, lowers the possibility of condition. What does that mean? We say, if you should see her, you could say if you see her, first conditional, Tell her, look, this is an imperative sentence. We could also use imperatives in first conditionals. So this sentence is a first conditional sentence. If you should see her, tell her we are waiting. I, it means you are saying that I know it's unlikely for you to see her. That's why we use should. Another example, if you should happen to see her, this is the same example, but we are lowering the possibility even more. For example, you see somebody and tell them, if you see Mary, please tell her to call me. And uh, that person says, ah, it's very unlikely for me to see Mary. I say, okay, if you should see Mary, please tell her to call me. And again, the person says, look, I almost never see Mary. And we say, all right, if you should happen to see Mary, Please, please ask her to call me. Okay, now, another point about conditional should. If you should have any inquiries, look, uh, please don't hesitate to call us. I'm not saying this. I'm not saying this is informal. 
but you could make this even more formal. This is like this student here is bringing down the possibility of the condition. You could, you could use should as your condition word. Instead of this, if you should have any, if you should have any inquiries, you could say, should you have any inquiries? It's very simple. Instead of if, it's like, you say, if you have any inquiries, you say, should you have any inquiries? This makes the speech sound more formal. In more formal texts, you hear this. Okay, but for, in conditionals. But for is another fixed phrase we use with conditionals. Uh, but remember that it always follows with a noun or a noun phrase. What does that mean? Example, if she hadn't helped third conditional, we'd be lost. Oh, this is a mixed conditional actually. If she hadn't helped, it means she helped us before. Now we are not lost, but we could change it. We could say, but for her help. This is a noun phrase. You don't use a clause or a sentence in here. But for her help, comma, would be lost. This is a very common form, a common advanced form of conditionals. Okay. You remember second conditional? We talked about it. You could, you could use second conditional by means, of different, uh, by means of a different structure. Using were to. Look at this second conditional. If I asked you, it means I'm not going to ask you. If I asked you, fake past, would you marry me? Second conditional, okay? Now, you could use it like this. You could use, you could say, if I were to ask, this comes in base form, base form. If I were to ask you, comma, would you marry me? These two sentences mean the same. Just, just, this is just a different form of the second conditional. Now, sometimes we want to make our conditional sentence sound more polite. What do we do? We use will or would in conditions. Look, example. You could say, if you wait here, the doctor will see you in a moment. This is probably like in a doctor's office. So the secretary wants to be more polite with the clients or with the patients. They say, if you will wait here, or if you would wait here. We generally don't use will and would in conditionals, so be careful. When you see them in conditionals, it could be because the speaker wants to uh, sound more polite. Now, again, emphasis in conditionals. Using will in the condition is not only for being polite. It could have another purpose too. Uh, if you will keep smoking, this is not being polite. This means something else. If you will keep smoking, you're going to damage your health. This is another first conditional. You see, you are going to. We could also use this in first conditionals. If you will keep smoking, it means if you insist, if you insist on smoking. Let's do an exercise together. Complete the second sentence using the word given. One, I didn't have the money, so I didn't buy the suit, would. Remember, this is a past situation. This is a hypothetical past situation. So we need to go for the third conditional, obviously. If I had had the money, when you say if I had the money, it means you're speaking about the present situation. That is fake past. So if I had had the money, I would have or I would have bought past participle form the suit. Number two, if you're in Melbourne by any chance, come and see me. Happen. In here, we are using happen to lower the probability of the condition. Uh, so it'll be if you happen to be in Melbourne, come and see me. This is another first conditional. Number three, if you insist on doing everything yourself, you'll get tired. You need to use will. And the answer is, if you will do everything yourself, you'll get tired. First conditional again, with will for emphasis. Number four, please take a seat and I'll inquire for you. We use will to be polite this time. So, if you will take a seat, 
I'll inquire for you. And the last one, the fire was brought under control thanks to Alan. This is a but for case. So we say, but for Alan, or but for Alan's help, a noun or a noun phrase. The fire would have got out of control. This is the third conditional, but in the condition we use but for. All right, this is our lesson today in conditionals. If you like the lesson, you know what to do. You can ask me your questions in the comment section or in direct messages. See you next time.